Sorry. <laughs> so my name is Danilo. I'm working for Log Entries, a branch of Rapid7. Uh, and I'm going to talk about Angular and React integration. And as I was trying to say, like you could ask why you would integrate Angular and React. But sometimes you don't take the decision. You just like it's being given you, and you need to integrate. Why you have a legacy code there? You have an app there running Angular. And the decision of the company is no. We are now migrating to React because we have like, several areas of our company that's using React, so we need to reuse the components and other things. So, and that was was happening there in log entries. And uh, and I was one of the first that was touching on the code to integrate, and I come up with different uh, problems, uh, like integrating routes, it's terrible. Uh, uh, integrating store with props, because uh, as the you have the map state to pass down the your state to the props as a prop to the component so but but I'll leave to later on so okay uh, we are gonna talk about uh, talk about both frameworks but to integrate two frameworks well, the best thing you need to to note it uh, how can I how can I integrate the framework without knowing the life cycle of the frameworks and the hooks possible hooks that you have to make the change and interact with. I think it's the main things that you can like take to, to the learning framework because they understand the life cycle and the hooks that they have. So based on that, um, um, everybody knows that React is based on two types of components. One is the stateless and the other one is container. Uh, I put here uh, out of the concept because it's a mix between uh, the other two. Uh, no one take as uh, different components, but I honestly think it's different because change of behavior and also change the way you need to manage the, the component. So if it's different, definitely it's a different type. Okay, uh, so uh, that's all it's about reusability and that's why I was driven to do that. So, uh, with reusability, we need to be careful with, uh, okay, I want to reuse a component, but is that component reusable properly? You know, it's something that you need to evaluate and figure it out when we are doing the things. And sometimes people create components and say, oh, that's my component, just use it. But it's not that simple, <laughs> you know? So uh, also, sometimes uh, the components are created and they are created to solve a specific context problems. And that's why when you think, oh, okay, maybe I could use that, but you don't see the implication of use the thing and you just mess up with your app. Okay, uh, I think it, I went too fast, but the idea is to show the, the code. I think it's important to get this part. Well, based on that, I created a library, but uh, I'm not, I, I won't show like consume the, uh, the, the library, I'll show the the code of the, the library. So we can play around here. I already start this way. Yeah. And that's here. Uh, let me see if I can make it better. It's fine now? Sorry, it's fine now? Uh, yeah, it'll be nice. <laughs> Sorry for that. I think it's a Hello, hello. Close. Yeah, thank you. Cool. <laughs> hello. Whoa. <laughs> Almost knocked down. <laughs> yeah, seems fine. Okay, uh, so I'll start showing the components that we, I have as a like an example here. 
uh, their React components and the idea is consuming into an Angular app. And as I said, the m I think the main problem was the root because uh, when you create React components using, uh, especially the React root, uh, you have uh, you don't have relative path. That's one of the biggest things. I you just need to define your uh, absolute path. And if you're consuming that, if you're consuming into a context of a parent path, you are totally lost because you change the state and you change the URL uh, different according to your main app that's consuming that. Okay, uh, so we have here a comment component that does get author and text prop and then render that as a simple HTML. Uh, we have also a counter, a simple counter based on uh, that needs to be wrapped by a store because I create uh, some actions and reduces to perform the actions. Uh, I'll, I'll be like more detailed when I got into the, the usage of each one. And you have here uh, Hello World, just simple one in stats that doesn't consume anything, just render as HTML there. Uh, you have also pages, that's good. You have a page component that has uh, nested components that's being changed based on root. So as I was saying, uh, with root, if you define using uh, your absolute path, and your components being rendered inside a parent path, when I change the URL and I click on the link there, they will change to a link that your app is not ready to handle. So it's a problem. So how can you solve that? And we'll see that here. Uh, okay, and I have a simple storage here just to, to pass down the props to the counter. Uh, okay, uh, then I have my app angular here. That's, let me just remove this first here. Okay. Uh, wh what we have, uh, how, how can I integrate uh, React component into Angular? I think most of the ones that are here, they already heard like, oh, you can use directives to integrate. You wrap your component there and you render. Simple like that. Yeah, it's simple. Apart from that details that we have. Okay. And then I abstract into functions like, okay, but how can my directive a common directive know about the component. So you need to rest the component first. So we have a method to rest the component. That's simple, actually a map. Just a map, just a dictionary. Uh, it, we are using ES6 here. When we use that syntax, it means that hello world key would be your hello world component. So that's the way we'll find out what component I w we need to render when I call the directive. Okay, uh, let's go to the example. And I'll explain one by one. Uh, here's the Angular app. Uh, as you can see here, the links. The links are. Okay, there. Uh, the links are here. We have a link for Hello World. We have a link for comment, page, counter and count with no wrappers. I'll explain why it's no wrappers. And this is just to show like uh, Angular is still handling the URL. So if I click here, you get a not found page. Uh, here is the root provider. Uh, let me just, okay. Uh, that's the home when I have the links and I have here the definition for the pages. And most of them are Angular pages. As hello world, I'm just consuming and say, okay, I won't consume the hello world components. And it seems to be just a string. It's because I read it before as a string object. I can map again and consume that. Uh, the same for the others, like comments, but I'm consuming here props. The same way as you, like, if you were uh, rendering a React component and you have props, you need to pass uh, down the things. So you can map through Angular. Uh, through a bind, like object bind, not a, a string value. Uh, and then you have the the key thing is the, the root manager. Uh, but let's go for the first one. Uh, here. Uh, I'm going to fast. Am I? Okay. 
so uh, we have the directive, and directive just receive the, the name. Let's go to the directive. So the directive is a uh, common angular directive that is ready to receive the history object uh, because we know React manage the, the the URLs based, actually, React root will manage the URLs based on a type of history that you can map. It could be a hash or a browser history. So you need to provide this in order to know how can you manage that. And you have also the root, what is the path where your component's being rendered. You have an object props and an object store because you could like use different store if you want, but if you use Redux, you probably use one single store. And the comp Sorry, I just changed here. Yeah, and the components, that's actually the, I'm consuming the name assigned to the directive. Uh, in this case, uh, as before, I have registered this, the key map, and here I got the components, and then I pass down to the render method. That's the most important part. Here, let me just go to the simple part without roots. Cool. So if I get this stage, uh, I just check if there is a store, if someone passes a store and I need to wrap or not. If not, I just render the components as a usual React component and just spread in the prop, which is simple, reasonable. But if you have a store, we just wrap into a provider. Um, in case you have roots, that's the tricky part. Uh, you need to we have a, a wrapper component, just like consume the, let me just contextualize better. Uh, you have a wrap component that you need to use as your your component refer related to the the path that you are trying to map that component. Like you, you have, um, for example, I have the pages, and a, the page component has two nested components. One is home, and the other one is contacts. I have the links there as well in the React component. And I want to render that into um, pages URL. But that pages URL is not React managing, it's Angular managing. How can I say to React, okay, you need to figure out a way to handle from this point to the end? Uh, one way it's like, uh, it's it for uh, fortunately, uh, Angular has a wired card and you can then map uh, your parent path and use wired cards to say I accept anything from here and the only thing that you need to do like anything else the only thing that you need to do apart from this is uh, you need to bypass angular when he's changing to the same URL otherwise you you have two uh, URL managers trying to to change, like to, to manage the state of the things and trying to render different components according to the, the images. So the, that's the idea. And in the, the proper directive, we already have kind of thing to patch the Angular uh, root change. And, ah, oh, sorry. Uh, and we just need to check if the URL belongs to the children. Uh, once it belongs to the children, I don't need to do anything. I just need to pass by and say, oh, React, manage that, because it's your turn. Uh, OK. Uh, I don't know if it's been clear. OK. So this is the hello world. Uh, this is the component. As you saw here, I have my name here and some text that's been provided by this. And uh, I have the pages as well here. Pages, okay. And the first time I'm uh, already showing the home because in React uh, I map to the default index show home page as the home. So if I change now for contact, contact is a link in React and change to the contact page. If I change the move back is a relative path, and I don't know if you can see down here, it's I'm uh, moving back one step and I'll go back to the home. There is one problem with that is I couldn't figure it out yet, 
It's the the move back, the button back. It doesn't work properly. Okay. Uh, oh, yeah. Is that better? So accessing here, ah, the link is still down there. Okay. So that two links, uh, that all the links are actually uh, managed by by React, uh, we can change the URL, but uh, they are relative. And I'll just show how can you make a relative path using uh, React to Router. Uh, OK, but before, uh, let me just move back here. OK, so we have now here a um, counter and a counter with no wrappers. What's the difference between them? One I'm rendering using, like, OK, I want to render this component. It's it's a it's a component that needs to be wrapped by store, and I want to render this component as a page. And this one, I just use the directive and say, story, oh, render that. That's the only difference between them, but they behave the same. And as you see here, the file that we have in the store, they are the same. So it's pretty cool when you see the thing working properly, but still have some issues that you need to manage. And here is Angular Manage the 404. Okay, uh, let's go then to the the page comp component, React ones. As I was saying, like what's important is you, when you create a reusable component, prepare your component to be properly reusable. Like think uh, about all the aspects that you want and show the, uh, like be, be explicit with the restrictions. Oh, we are not covering this, this, and this. Because it's easy to someone else like that's trying to reuse, manage that, and say, okay, for my problem here, it will work. Uh, as I said, React Router doesn't have a relative path definition for that. Uh, I hope they add this some, some soon, or but they don't have now for now. So what you can do is, uh, when you are loading your your components, your components being loaded like assigned to a root every time, and you have also nested roots assigned to nested components. Sorry, uh, assigned to other components. It means that you have components with nested components, but all of them they will receive the the proper the list of roots that's being accessed. And the only thing that it also uh, Apart from this, they also have the own root, like, oh, this is my root. So you can then identify, okay, from the list of roots that I have, I, I, I'm, I am this root in the middle of that list, so I can figure it out what is the path to here, and then use that to build my relative path. For, for instance, uh, this page component is being rendered under the page URL. You have home and context. Home is the default one, context is just context. And when I get the pages, I have the my roots here. Sorry, I have my roots here. And also, I have my root. So I know specifically where I should slice the thing and get my parent path. And based on that, you can create relative paths. So you just get the list of roots sliced to that point and then filter, removing the, the ones that doesn't have like anything because it's not, sometimes you have empty roots just because it's index O, but doesn't matter in this case. And removing that, you just map and get the, the path and join them, you have your parent path, full parent path. Based on that, you can create your relative path easily, just use the normal notation like this or this, moving back one step and always access contact. I think that's the idea, and uh, here there is some, some comments explain like uh, if you what is expected in each scenario and how how can you manage that. Well, uh, I think it m most of the thing is that, but I don't know if I was being clear. Sorry, <laughs> seems a bit complex when talking. I don't know. It's it's being easy to get. Okay, nice. <laughs> so I think it's that. I hope you have enjoyed. So does anyone have any questions Question. for Danilo?
Can you show the app Angular JS file? Yep. The app? App Angular JS is not showing here as yeah. yeah, this. Um when you do this any G React five component. When you declare this one. Sorry? When you're declaring this template, is yep. it fail fast? I mean, does it uh, fail on compile time or just when it runs on runtime? I didn't get this. this. Sorry. Uh, the I, didn't get I didn't get the question. I didn't understand. Uh, if it's fail fast, I mean, if you compile the JavaScript. Yeah, I'm, I'm using ES6, so I'm transpiling this. But I don't have, like, here, it's not TypeScript. I don't have any type verification that things. You want to know if I'm, like, during the compilation, I'm checking if it's valid. Uh, Is that? Yeah, if the component comment, and you do any direct file component comment, Oh, sorry, here. Yeah. Is okay. It so it's if just you a string. Spell, for example, if you misspell the component, it won't work. But it won't work. On runtime. It won't work. Good question. I, I never tried, but I definitely won't work. Because it's just based on, on map. So we, here you have the map, like hello load to reload word object, comment to comment. So if you misspell that, you will just try to import something that doesn't exist. You get an undefined and try to render an undefined with an error. Yeah, good catch. Um, I have a question. Is it is it worth it? What? Uh, no, like just a straight up question. Well, like uh, like rather than refactoring, or is it like just a business decision that you you didn't you needed like your existing app and then you had the new stuff? So yeah, worth because it's like. Uh, uh, as you guys, we are using, like, we are feature wrapping our, our new stuff, and it's a good way to, to release to users. That's why I asked that. <laughs> 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 and, um, yeah, worth because you can release, like, when you note that you have some problems with the user as uh, relates to some components that were poorly developed or something like that, you need to replace urgently for just some users or not others, and it's easy to, to manage that. In our case, in our directive, we also have like features. We just need to apply the feature that in directive manager. And it's pretty simple to, to use like React in, into the Angular app. And is the main plan then to kind of get rid of the, the, Angular. the Angular app and just yeah. eventually become React? Cool. Yeah. Well, well, with this, I'm not saying Angular is bad. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, really, really. I, I truly believe that Angular is a good good framework. You just need to know how to use and when to use it. It's like you cannot just say, oh, it's rubbish and, you know, uh, everything has your own, like, target and own context of problems to solve. To solve. Any other questions? In your example, you used uh, the Redux store for the React components. Let's say you want to access that store inside your your Angular app. Is there any specific way on how you do that? Well, to use Redux in inside Angular? Yes. Uh, you know, like, if you're using Redux, I don't know, like, let me ask. Are you using ES6? Yeah. Okay, so you are using module, like you are defining things, your files and yeah, your no, I, components in modules and importing and consuming them, hmm. right? So as any object there, you can import your store uh, any place. So you can import even inside the Angular file and use that to bind to a prop and then pass down to a directive or even use search to dispatch actions or wherever. So it's, yeah, it's simple and it's worth. Okay, you're not having some specific way to bind it to the scope or something. You just need to assign. Yeah. Like, just okay. assign to a, a property in your scope and we'll be there and you just need to pass down, like, I don't know how, or what is the experience with Angular. You know, when you have in your control, in your scope some property, you can bind yeah. property, well, uh, like reference to the directive. So it, it's the same way as any other directive. Okay. Just asking if you had it 
built in in the framework or some way or but thank that answered my question thank you okay sure